reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I should thank you for allowing me to speak this evening, and Stephen should thank me for giving him a week off from preaching on Wednesday. So it's good to be here, and it's good to, to share a little with you all on the gift and the power of water. I seem to have an affinity to water, or more accurately, water seems to have a strong, powerful affinity to me. So here's a story for you. I was about three, maybe Hudson's age, right? Almost. So I was known in, to be a fish. So I loved water, loved swimming. We had an in-ground pool at our house and loved to be out there. So during the summer, I had two older brothers. I have two older brothers, and during the summer, we would be out, outside. That They would have their friends over. They'd be playing, and they would be occupying the pool. And so they love the water, and I don't remember the story that I'm telling you, but I have heard it over and over again. So the story goes that I was joyfully shouting and cheering for all the big boys who were out there playing, doing their thing in the pool. They're jumping, splashing around. I'm assuming one of them was supposed to be watching me. And so they were in charge of me, and here I was, this lone, small child, by the pool. So one by one, the teenagers start jumping in. Cannonballs, belly flops, dives, large splashes, and dramatic and beautiful flips and turns. So one by one they jumped. And one by one they came up from the water to the shouts and cheers of their friends. And so the story goes that I wanted to take part in the jumping and the splashing. So there, as the boys went one by one into the water, so did I. So I jumped into the water fearlessly, and I jumped with all my strength and excitement that I could muster at that age, and one by one, each of those boys jumped after me. They all jumped to save and to get me out of the water because I trusted. I felt the thrill of the water, this refreshment of a cool pool on a summer day. I jumped, and I was caught. Water seems to have an affinity to me. And so let me set up another scenario for you. True story, Wisconsin, middle of winter, January, February, what do we think about? Ice. Cold and ice, perfect. So that's the scene we have, below zero, snowy. I was in Milwaukee for a year doing my internship during seminary. And so the tradition at this congregation was to take the confirmation students way up north and to have a retreat for a weekend. North Wisconsin, ice all along the lake, and the ritual of initiation for the confirmads and for the new intern was to jump in a hole in the ice. So there we are my first retreat with all these confirmation students, with my supervisor, with everybody nervous and anxious, the students who had not jumped in the lake before. Everybody was geared up and frenetic and crazy. And so the ritual involved doing this at night, because why not, right? So it included being in a sauna, right? We got to hype this all up. This is middle school students. So you're in the sauna, you're in your bathing suits, and then eventually, one by one, you're as hot as you can be. You walk outside down the steps, you know, timid and fearful, excited. And there's the hole that had been cut out precisely earlier that night. And the chill of the air was there. And so one by one, the students and those adults who were present would jump into the hole 
in the ice. And each time you would come up and there would be the cheers of all of those students and the chaperones and the pastor that was there. You would jump into this cold air and you would be surrounded by others. Water seems to have an affinity to me. So when I mentioned the word baptism, these illustrations, would they have come first to your mind? These are your typical illustrations of baptism. So, and it's not to say that when I was three, obviously, or even when I was a pious seminary intern, right, baptism was not the first thought that would come into my mind. <laughs> you probably have your own thoughts of what you would be saying if you're jumping into an ice hole in the middle of Wisconsin, right? We don't need to repeat any of those, but... But in each of these experiences and daily in our life, I think about these illustrations and it reminds me that I don't have to think about baptism, I don't have to think about God, but God does think about me. God thinks of each and every one of us and that God calls us beloved children of God. That God forgives us, that God claims us, and God loves us. And that sometimes it's enough to hold on to that power of remembering that God has called and claimed each of us in baptism. So from these unexpected places of baptism, I learned something important about this God that we serve and the gift that we get in water and being claimed and bound to the body of Christ. So whether in jumping into a pool of water unaware of the consequences or jumping into a hole of ice, with cold, cold water, with each jump and in each instance. When I came up, I was caught in the arms of community. I was surrounded by others. In each instance of falling and of drowning myself, when you come up for air, you are surrounded by God's people. The waters of God's love are all-encompassing. This water has an affinity for all of us. And I need to believe deeply in this power of being held and being caught. Because we don't know much for certain, but we know that God is God. God is God of all and calls us to be God's people. And it's what we can cling to when everything else seems to be spiraling out of control. When we're unsure of the future, when we're sick, when we're facing transitions, when we need to make a change in relationship or in our work or personal life, we cling to the fact that we are caught and held in God's arms and in this community that binds us together and that we do not go it alone. So this water, this word of God marks us as beloved and forgiven, and is freely flowing, all-consuming, graceful, and life-changing. It takes our breath away, not necessarily in the jump in an ice-cold hole in the lake, but it takes our breath away in that we are astounded and in awe of the people, of the God that brings us together to be community. And it quenches our deepest and most fulfilling desires. It springs forth hope in barren and desolate, desolate lands. This water encourages us, encourages us to reach out our hands so that we can catch others and so that we can com be compelled to share this water with others. So this evening, hear the water. Hear God's love for you, for each of us, and whether you're ready to jump head first or whether you're hesitant, whether you believe or doubt, the waters of God's love are for you. Hear the water. Hear God's forgiveness. Hear waters of healing. Hear waters of hope. They are springing forth. They are bubbling. They are yearning to be shared with the world. These waters are for all of us, for you, for me, for this world, 
And we go forward knowing that we are caught in God's all-consuming and loving embrace. Amen.